super in-depth video on um, all the different colors and stuff that I have and my recommendations. Also like a quick demo to show you guys how to use them for any of you out there who maybe struggle with using Swarovski crystals. So with you. Welcome back to another video on my channel. I have a highly, highly, super for years requested video to share with you guys today. And that is my entire Swarovski crystal collection. This is gonna be a very comprehensive video. We are gonna go over every single crystal that I have in my collection, talk about the colors. I'm gonna share with you some of my favorites, some of my must haves, a little background for you about me and Swarovski crystals. I have been using Swarovski crystals successfully on my clients for probably, I wanna say like nine years. I really got into the bling on nails like immediately as soon as my nail career started. But it wasn't until I started seeing people use like super sparkly rhinestones on nails that I was like, what is this? Like, I need this. I cannot use the acrylic gems anymore. I need Swarovski crystals on my clients. So I used to have this giant collection of um, acrylic gems. And then when I discovered the world of Swarovski, I stopped offering the acrylic gems to people because the Swarovski crystals are just far more superior. Like they just, they're so sparkly. They don't fade. They don't get mucked up, nothing. So Swarovski crystals and me are just, I love. Uh, so I've never really taken like the education and stuff that is out there for uh, doing Swarovski crystals, but I know how to use them. I know how to make them stick and I'm going to share a lot of that in this video with you guys. So, and then at the end of the video, I will demo step-by-step -step how I do a Swarovski crystal nail. Have a video up years ago talking all about Swarovski crystals and the tools and stuff that I like and why I like them and how I do it. Uh, but it's really old. So this is kind of like an updated version of that. I also show Swarovski crystals in many of my tutorials. I just don't really explain, I guess, in the tutorials what I'm doing because I have that video up. So this will be an updated version of it. I love using Swarovski crystals as an accent in combination with the different nail art that I am doing and kind of tying the different colors together. So you don't need to have all these colors by any means. And we're going to dive into that a bit more. But if you like using Swarovski crystals in combination, like the colors in combination with art, this video is going to be super helpful for you because I'm going to just we're gonna chat a lot about the different crystals that I have. So sit down, grab a coffee, grab a wine, grab a snack, whatever you need, it's gonna be a long one. So let's dive in. Let's talk first about how I organize my Swarovski crystals. So um, I have a few different containers here. We have this one, which is just like a small Swarovski crystal container that I have some of my bigger crystals in. I don't use the big crystals as much as I use kind of the smaller ones. Um, so this video is gonna be focused mostly on just regular Swarovski crystal shapes not the odd shapes. So this, these containers are really great too because they're really easy to open up and um, get your crystals out of. So you can just like open them up and it's really easy to get like your pens and stuff in there for um, working with them. Um, and then I do have some of like the pearl Swarovski crystals too. We'll talk more about these ones in a second. But so I store my Swarovski crystals mostly, the ones that I use all the time, the flatbacks, in uh, these containers that you can get from Michaels. You can find these on Amazon. I've seen people actually find these at um, Dollarama too, which is someplace I never thought to look for these. But you can get these containers kind of all over the place. Um, I keep them in these, the actual holders that they come in too, um, but I take the lid off because, which is not maybe something that's a good idea. Um, I lay these flat in my drawer so the lid isn't overly necessary, but if you have them stacked on top of each other, I encourage you to keep the lid because the, the containers kind of sliding on each other are gonna scratch up your little containers and then it's kind of hard to see what's in there. The little labels that are on them are ones that my mom made for me and then um, I have a little Swarovski crystal kind of glued on here too to see uh, which color goes with, with which. Um, I have a video up organizing these so if you want more in-depth look at how we organize these uh, check out that video. So and I'm going to open every single container and show you every single one and we're going to talk about every single one of these. This is called Siam and Siam is a dark red Swarovski crystal. I love using Siam for fall time or Christmas time. It is a really, really beautiful dark Swarovski crystal for this time of year. I use this a lot for Halloween nails as well. Um, and very similar to it is Siam, which is like the brighter version. And yes, you guys are gonna notice crystals of different colors mixed in. It's something that doesn't bother me, but I know it bothers some people when they're watching my crystal videos. Over the years of using a lot of crystals, 
it just happens and I don't take the time to sort them out so you guys are gonna see that throughout the video as well and I apologize if that kind of bugs people <laughs> okay so Siam is a brighter red version and if you're wanting to get a red Swarovski crystal and you don't want a bunch of them or get light Siam because you're gonna get more use out of it with Valentine's Day with Christmas um, all of that versus the darker version of it as well but um, light Siam is one of my most used crystals especially for Christmas time this one which I love this one I love 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 this one this is called hyacinth I don't know I feel like I might be saying that wrong this is like an orange kind of coral color so it leans a little bit more on the pink side versus like a really bright orange um, this is great for doing any sort of summer nails or coral nails and I should talk about the sizes in here as well. So all of my color, but different sizes in the same container. And then that way when I'm using the crystals, I can just dump them on these little palettes here and then find the size that I need. That works really well for me, but I know a lot of people prefer to have their crystals um, separated by size. Because I have so many of them and I use a bunch of different colors for each design, I prefer all of the colors to be together and just have the multiple sizes. Most used sizes of the crystals. Um, I love, size 20 which are these ones here um, I also love these ones here which are size 12 I believe these ones are size 9 and then these ones are size 7 so those are my most used size of crystals um, if you don't want 20 it's a little bit big the 12s are great 16 is a great option too um, I find size 5s a little bit too small for me and then size 3 is like next level small I don't use a ton of um, threes but I also when I do Swarovski crystal designs want a big pop of Swarovski crystals. So if you have clients that just want um, finer kind of crystals and don't want a, a lot of that I'm wearing Swarovski crystal look, you're going to want the smaller sizes. This is a uh, pad paradisia. Oh gosh, I don't know you guys. Um, this is another great coral option for Swarovski crystals, but it is more on the pink side. So again, if you're doing coral nails, um, come spring or summertime this is a great crystal to get for coral nails um, I use it all of the time come springtime and it's just so so beautiful the kind of peachy coral colors this is rose peach another one of my absolute favorite crystal colors for springtime um, it leans more on like the peachy side and it's definitely a little bit lighter than the last one that I just shared with you but these are great colors for spring and summer Swarovski crystal nails. Okay, so we're gonna move into like the oranges now. My most used, most popular crystal for orange is this one, and this is called Sun. And I love Sun for Halloween nails. It is just a beautiful, bright orange color. It's really great for any sort of um, Halloween nails as well. If you're wanting something a little bit more fall though, Topaz is a great option because it's kind of that like i don't want to say like burnt orange color but it's just a little bit more rustic looking um and is a great option for fall uh, i also have in here fire opal which i don't use very often but if i ever do like sun nails or vacation nails i do reach for this one it's got kind of an uh, multicolor effect where it's orange red and yellow it's really pretty but i don't reach for it very often and then tangerine is another great orange option. It is a lighter version of sun. Another really nice option for like this time of year where we're leading into fall nails. It's a great color for that as well. Okay, this one is a really great yellow Swarovski crystal. This one is called Jonquil. And I love this one because it is a lighter yellow. It almost has like a little bit of a green tinge to it too. It is a great option for spring nails or if you do, I don't wanna say chartreuse green, but like like lighter yellow type of nails. Um, this is a great Swarovski crystal to pair with those type of nail designs. Light Topaz is one of my favorite. I don't have um, any in here because I've used them. They're just so great. Uh, but I'll show you my Light Topaz on my cheat sheet over here. Cheat sheet. I got from Rhinestones Unlimited years ago. This is the 2015 version. I have not updated it since. They come out with Swarovski crystals like every year, like different colors and new options and sizes and stuff. Um, so I have not kept up with that as far as this sheet goes, but I use this all the time. Mostly I keep this at my editing desk so that if I cannot remember the name of a crystal that I've shown in a video, I can just quickly check this instead of coming over to my nail desk and looking at what crystal I was using. Um, for the most part though, I know 
a lot of these crystals like by heart when I'm filming um, and I know like what to reach for because I've been using them for so long. So, so this is the sheet and it goes over all of the crystals that were available in 2015. Um, I also have like a workbook, not a workbook, it's like an order book or something from them too. And it shows all the different sizes in it too. I'm gonna link that video, my first all about Swarovski crystal video. And again, it's another jam packed video. So it'll show you that chart and all of the different sizes, my most used ones, it hasn't changed. But um, the crystal that I'm trying to show you guys, light topaz. <laughs> right there light topaz it is so pretty it is kind of a medium yellow like citrine which i'm going to show you guys right away is a brighter yellow we have jonquil over here citrine sunflower is a darker yellow this one's really pretty too and then light topaz is kind of like an in-between of these two um we're also going to talk about light colorado topaz another one of my favorite crystals but it's like a gold so when we get to the neutrals we'll talk about light colorado topaz um and you guys already saw topaz which is kind of like an orange so um Light Topaz is really pretty. As you can tell, I've used it all up. My favorite yellow crystal is Citrine, and this is my most used yellow Swarovski crystal. Um, it is a nice, bright crystal. It can also be paired with like darker colors to tone it down, or it's great for not quite neon nails. They do have like neon crystals. I don't love them. We'll, we'll kind of talk about this a little bit, but these are like their neon crystals. I don't love them because they're, they're less crystal-y, I guess. Um, so they do have like a brighter version of a yellow, but it's not my favorite. So if I was going to do neon nails, I would use this Rossi crystal, even though it's not like a true like um, highlighter electric type of neon color. Um, it is a really nice option as well. Okay, we're going to move into the greens. This is one of my favorite greens. It is a great light green and it is called Peridot. As you can see, I need some more. This is a really nice one for springtime if you're going to do like floral nails and uh, do some greenery and stuff. It's really pretty for that. Um, I don't use this one a lot in the winter. The one I use a lot in the winter is this one. It is called Dark Moss Green um, and it is a really nice darker green. This is probably my most used green um, because it is a really, really dark green crystal. I have a lot of other ones in here to share with you though. This is my favorite crystal if I'm gonna do any sort of mint design and this is Chrysolite. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's a really nice light green. It pairs really nice with mint nails. Um, I, this is another very popular one in my collection. This one is nice too. It is called Uranite. God, you guys, I'm sucking at the names of these. Anyway, this one is kind of more of a medium green. I don't get a lot of use out of these. I get a lot of use out of Chrysolite, Peridot, and um, Dark Moss Green. Those are my top greens. This one, I want to say it's like khaki green or something. Um, I don't have the name for it, couldn't find the name for it, but it is a fantastic green for fall. It is kind of like a darker fall green. Um, a very, very close second to this one that I like, that I know you can get, is this one, which is called Olivine, and it is a great olive green, a fantastic green for fall. It is so, so beautiful, and I, I used to use it a lot during fall times as well. It pairs so nicely with um, like topaz and then some of the browns that I'm gonna share with you. It pairs really nicely with that one. I only have size fives in here, but Pacific Opal, this is a great color for like ocean nails um, because it has like a really nice kind of goldish green iridescentness to it. I love using that for ocean nails. This one is called Emerald and it is very, very similar to Dark Moss Green, except it's more on the blue side. It is really, really pretty. I do really like it for um, winter nails, but I do find I reach for dark moss green more than the emerald. So if you're trying to decide between the two for your studio, um, I would personally recommend uh, dark moss green over the emerald one. What do we have going on here? Okay, this is a mix. <laughs> and this has happened to me. So there's been a few times where I've been using Swarovski crystals and I've got a bunch of different colors out and I put them in like my little trays and then when I go to dump them back in their containers, I dump them in the wrong one and instead of taking the time to sort them, they just become a mix. And that is what happened with this one. You're going to see this again with a couple other ones. So in my mix container here, we have two of my favorite teal and turquoises. My most popular turquoise colors are these two. So this one is called Blue Zircon and it is a darker kind of color than light turquoise. Both of these are staples in my collection. Um, I truly just don't know which one I would tell you to pick. Um, I, I, 
I get a lot of use out of both of them. It depends whether I'm doing teal nails or if I'm doing turquoise nails. If I'm doing teal nails, I tend to reach for the blue Zircon because it pairs nicely with greener shades. And if I'm doing uh, more turquoise designs, then I reach for light turquoise. But both of these are staples in my collection, so I'd have a tough time telling you which, which one to pick. If I ever am doing teal or turquoise nails, I just reach for this mix because it has both of them in them. <laughs> These three that I'm going to share with you are not popular. I don't reach for them very often at all, but again, it's a collection video. So this here is called Iridescent Green, and Iridescent Green is a multicolor green. It's got some brown to it, a blue tinge, and then like a green tinge to it too. It's a really nice color for fall nails. I just generally don't think to use it, but it is a good option for fall. This one, I want to say it's just called Mint. I can't remember where I got it from. I can't remember anything about it, but I think it's just mint. I don't love these type of flat Swarovski crystals, so I don't bring a lot of these in and I don't use them very often. Every once in a while though, they are nice to do as like a center and then surround them with more sparkly crystals. So I do have some of the mint ones. Again, I don't tend to reach for them very often and it's just in my collection here. This one here is called Luminous Green. Um, this is really pretty. It actually kind of reminds me of the Jonquil one, um, except it's got like a green kind of AB finish to it. AB means Aurora Borealis, and it is all like the span of colors. Um, so this has kind of an AB finish to it. it. Just depending on how the light hits it, it changes colors. Um, this is a great one if you, um, are doing like light floral nails. It pairs nicely with that. Okay, we're gonna move into the blues. I have a lot of blues, a lot of blue crystals. It's hard to decide which blue ones. Um, for some reason, I go through all of these. Like I really just, a lot of them I really just like. This is my most popular, most used blue crystal. And this one is called Capri Blue. It is a great medium blue Swarovski crystal. It is fantastic for all year round. If you were just trying to get one blue, this is probably the one that I would recommend you get uh, because it pairs with dark blues, it pairs with medium blues, and it kind of could pair with light blues. Um, like would just pull some of that light blue. It's my most popular one. But um, these dishes that you're seeing, they're just candle holders from Michaels. So they're just in the Michael in the candle holder department and that is what they are. I got that idea from Natasha Harton. She showed it on her Instagram one time and I was like, I need that. I'm gonna go in order of my must-haves for the blues. This one here is called Aquamarine and Aquamarine is a really nice light blue. I use this a lot at Christmas time for snowflake nails and uh, it is just the perfect like light blue type of color. Really, really great for snowflake nails. Um, so if you just wanted to get a couple of blues, I would say get Capri Blue and then get Aquamarine and then you would have a really good range of blue options. And then the next one, which this one I don't get a ton of use out of, but I'm going to share it anyway. This one is called Light Sapphire and Light Sapphire is kind of like a periwinkle, almost like medium blue color. It's pretty, I just don't reach for it very often. It doesn't pair with a lot of the colors that I tend to gravitate towards um, for doing nail art. Um, going along with that sapphire. I don't reach for sapphire very often either. They're almost not bold enough for me is what I would say. So uh, sapphire, light sapphire, I would rather go on more of this spectrum of capri blue and then aquamarine than these two. Plus I feel like sapphire and light sapphire are very, very similar um, looking. So there's just not enough that like color definition. This is another one of my favorite blues. This is called Denim Blue, and this is the perfect blue for fall nail. That fall kind of grayish blue, it is so perfect for it. And during like winter time, when I do snowflake nails, I like to mix the different shades of blue. So you will see me use um, Capri, Aquamarine, Denim Blue. Denim Blue gets featured a lot. Combined with like Crystal and AB, because I just love the mix of different shades of blue for snowflake nails. This is a really pretty one. I love this one for snowflake nails too. And this one is called Air Blue Opal. And again, we have that iridescent gold tinge. It's a really nice light blue. Again, perfect for snowflake nails. This is metallic blue. It is darker than denim blue, so another great fall option. It's just not one that I reach for a lot, but it's a really pretty blue too. 
Um, and then aquamarine, a lot of the colors you can get in AB version two. I don't tend to reach for um, the ABs over the regular colors, but it is an option. So this is aquamarine blue, and you'll see it's got that AB finish to it, where depending on the how the light hits it, it changes colors. Um, there's not very many in here because I didn't have very many of them, and I don't reach for this one very often. This is dark indigo, another one that I don't reach for very often. It's still really pretty. All Swarovski crystals are pretty, but um, I just don't reach for it. I don't know if it's just too dark. I don't know what it is. Okay, let's talk about purples. Um, hands down, two favorite purples of mine. Um, this is purple velvet. This is one of my top purples to invest in. I love this. It is just a beautiful dark purple color. I love this for Halloween nails. I love this for winter nails. It is so, so pretty for all of those different uses. It's one of my most used purple crystals. And then this is my one of my favorite um, lighter purples. And this is Providence Lavender. It is a really great light purple. So if you're doing lilac nails, um, this is the one that you're likely going to want to get because it is just so beautiful for lilac nails. Another one that I really like is called Tanzanite. Um, I love Tanzanite, but I love it. It is a great medium purple shade. I just find it's just too similar to Providence Lavender for me. And if I had to choose between them, I would pick Providence Lavender because it's lighter. And then I would have that contrast of the Velvet Purple and the Providence Lavender. But if you just want one purple crystal, get Tanzanite because it um, is a great medium purple and it would meet a lot of different like demands for your purple crystals, I guess. Um, this, is, this is one of my favorite purple crystals and this is called Light Amethyst. It is just a beautiful light purple, but it leans kind of more on the pinky side. So if you're doing any sort of nail designs that um, like you kind of have like a light pinky purple to it, this is a great one to kind of pair with them. It's one of my top crystals for sure. And then to go along with that, we have Amethyst, which I don't have very many of um, because I love this one and I use this a lot during the fall time. Amethyst is a great like purple fuchsia color. Um, it's really pretty, like not one of my most used colors, but when I do like a fuchsia nail design, this is the one that I wanna have in my collection for it. Have we done all my purples? Yes, yeah, so let's move into pinks. Pinks are fun. This is Indian pink. Now, Indian pink is another one of my favorite crystals for coral type of nails. Um, it is really, really pink on like the coral spectrum. Um, I, I say this all the time when I talk about corals, but everybody has a different definition of what coral is. Um, some people want more pink, some people want more orange. Um, I feel like there's not just like a true coral out there. I feel like they all kind of vary. And this is a pinky coral, a really great one for summertime. And if you wanted to bring in two corals um, for summer, I would probably say bring in this one, this hyacinth and um, Indian pink because then you have your orange and you have your pink too. And I would pick this one over the Paradisco one um, because it's more pink, but these are some great coral options. Okay. We have the same kind of dilemma going on here <laughs> where some of my products got mixed. So we have light rose and we have rose. And light rose, well, I'll just dump this and we'll see what we can find in here. Yeah, okay, there's some good comparisons in here. Light Rose is this lighter pink here, and then Rose is this kind of darker pink. Both Light Rose and Rose are staples in my collection. I would not tell you to pick either one over them because I use both of these all the time. Um, light one I obviously use for more lighter pink nails, and then uh, Rose I use for more medium pink nails, and then we're gonna get into Fuchsia here soon for dark pinks. All three of them are staples in my collection. And when I was first investing in Swarovski crystals and bringing all of the different colors in, those were the three that I decided on. Um, they're all staples in my collection. I have them all in all of the different sizes. And so Fuchsia is a little bit brighter than Rose. So Fuchsia, Rose, and then Light Rose. And all three of them are staples in my collection. If you only wanted to do wrap a couple of them, get Light Rose and get Fuchsia. Maybe just skip the rose one. If you only wanted one, get rose. I like to have a variety of light, dark, and medium, but if you only want a few of them, get light, dark. If you only want one, get the medium. This is my favorite, hands down, 
Strassi Crystal, probably all time color. It's not gonna come as any surprise to those of you who like, kept up with my videos for a really long time. Um, this is Vintage Rose. It is the perfect Vintage Rose type of color. It is just so beautiful. And I use this all the time, especially if I'm doing floral nails and I want kind of those more neutral type of pinks. This is the Swarovski crystal that I'm going to reach for. It is just stunning. And this is a color that I never let myself run out of because I know that I use it all the time. Yeah, so antique pink is another one of my favorite um, pink crystals, but I just don't have it here. It's almost like a greenish pink, like depending on how the light hits it, it either looks um, like a dark pink or a green. So for me and doing floral nails all the time, this is a great option for it. Another one that I love that I'm clearly out of is burgundy. Burgundy is perfect for fall time. It's that kind of Merlot color that pairs really nicely with like Merlot different shades or like darker pinks or anything like that. You're gonna want burgundy for fall time. It is a great option. They're not really, they're not opals. They're just like a flat matte type of color. Don't know the name of them. I hardly reach for this one, um, but I do have that in my collection. Okay, let's talk about my three must have staples, especially if you're just starting out with your Swarovski crystal collection. These are the ones that you should invest in instead of spending the money on like um, colors, as fun as the colors are, get these ones because you're gonna get the most use out of them. So first up is Crystal AB. It is the Aurora Borealis of the crystal family. Um, so it is clear, but it has that multicolored effect to it. And the nice thing about these crystals is whatever color you pair it with, it's going to pull those crystal colors. So if you pair this crystal with a pink, it's gonna look a little bit more pink. If you pair it with a purple, it's gonna look a little bit more purple. So it is versatile with any color of nail design that you are doing. It is a hands down staple. Get all the sizes of this one. Um, it's the most popular crystal and the most used one. Uh, next to the next one that I'm gonna share with you guys. It is just called Crystal, and it is, it is just like the silver crystals. And um, this one, if you're only looking to get one crystal, this is the one that you're gonna want because it is the most versatile. It pairs with absolutely anything. It looks like little diamonds on the nails. Um, this is the one that you are gonna want to invest the most in and always have on hand, um, especially if you're starting out. Um, and you were only going to bring in one crystal, get this one over the Aurora Borealis. Um, especially if you really want them to look like little diamonds on the nails, this is the one that you're going to want. The next one is White Opal. This is another staple in my collection, never run out of crystal. And it is the opal color, depending on how the light hits it, it looks white or it looks like gold. And if you want a white Swarovski crystal, this is the one that you are going to want. It is fantastic for winter nails, for snowflake nails, use it all the time during that specific season. So it is another hands down staple in my collection. Okay, we have some ABs here that I'm gonna talk about that just kind of creeped into my collection. And then we're gonna move into the neutral Swarovski crystals and what I think about those. This crystal is beautiful. It's not one that I reach for very often, but it is stunning when I do use it. Uh, this is called Paradise Shine, and it is a really pretty purple Swarovski crystal um, with like a green iridescent to it. So if I'm ever doing like purple floral nails, this is the one that I would reach for because I'm going to pull in some of that green from the leaves using that one. Uh, okay, so these are some of the ABs. I don't love a lot of these in all honesty, but it's Fuchsia AB. So it is like the Fuchsia color that I shared with you, but the AB multicolored finish. The reason that I don't love these is because the fuchsia color is like a really bright pink. And so the AB color, when you have that AB finish in it, it looks like blue. And I just, I don't love this. Like I honestly don't know if I've ever really used this one. Um, just because I, I don't do designs where I have like the red and the blues. Like to me that just those colors just don't pair the best. So I don't tend to reach for this though. Now that I'm talking about it, I should push myself out of my comfort zone and try and do a design to use that one. Um, this one is called uh, light topaz AB. This one's really pretty. Like I feel like any of the neutrals when they have AB to them, they're really, really nice. Just like this one, like this, you could pair with so many different things um, because it's got that neutral finish to it. And then I also have light peach AB, which is just a little bit lighter than that last one. 
um, but again it's a neutral so it's got like a gold tinge to it whereas just regular AB almost has like a silver tinge to it so that is a really nice one okay um the last kind of odd one here that I have is called volcano again one that I don't reach for very often um, it almost looks AB too depending on how the light hits it it looks orange purple yellow green like it's got a lot of different colors to it so it would be a good one for fall but not one that i reach for very often let's talk about browns um mocha is probably my favorite brown crystal um fantastic for fall time it is a great dark kind of brown color depending on how the light hits it it, lo it looks gold or it looks brown it is just fantastic for fall nails smoked topaz so if you guys remember when I showed you Topaz, Topaz has um, like an orangey brown finish to it and Smoked Topaz has more of a darker brown finish to it. If you're trying to decide between which brown one to get, I would suggest this one um, just because it can be used in light brown designs or dark brown designs, whereas I feel like Mocha is more geared towards dark brown. This one here is Copper, another fantastic option for um, fall nails. It is... A, like a lighter version of the smoked topaz but it's not quite an orange and it's not quite a brown it's kind of an in-between of those two different colors grayish here which will lead me into my blacks and we'll have a great black Swarovski crystal conversation because I've got some thoughts on black Swarovski crystals so this one is called grayish and I love this one I really just do it is a great gray Swarovski crystal but it's got that like neutral kind of beige tone to it too another great one for fall but also really good for all year round if you're just doing any sort of gray designs it is a great option for gray Swarovski crystals this one's called jet nut this is another one of my favorite brown crystals like I love jet Jet nut and it's because it's so shiny it is just such a pretty brown sparkle it almost has like a metallic look to it and I love combining this one with um, mocha I feel the same way about black Swarovski crystals as I do about black glitters I find that black Swarovski crystals look more matte than sparkly and I think it's like the same type of idea with like black glitters like it's hard to have a black glitter that is really sparkly so um, I'm gonna show you kind of the ones that I have and what I like and don't like about them jet is a black flat Swarovski crystal it doesn't have a ton of like that Swarovski crystal sheen to it to me personally I feel like on the nails it just looks like a black dot and I'm not <laughs> a big fan of that so I wouldn't recommend getting Jet if you were looking for a black crystal. I would recommend getting Cosmo Jet. And I love Cosmo Jet for a black crystal as an option for a black crystal because it has more of a sparkle to it. It has more of a sheen to it. It's not that flat black crystal that the um, Jet one is. Maybe it's hard to kind of see that, but it's definitely got more of a nice sheen to it. Probably the one that I would recommend to get if you're looking for a black crystal, but it's not really a black crystal. This one is called Black Diamond. Um, it is more gray for sure than um, black, but it's a good option. Um, and if you were to pair this one with Cosmo Jet, you would have um, some, gosh, I just have a lot of stuff going on in this container. More of that black kind of finish and some of the sheen of Cosmo Jet I think would pull nicer with um, Black Diamond. So this is the one that I would probably recommend if you're looking for a black sparkle, but I don't know you guys, I feel the exact same way about my black sparkles as I do about my black glitters. This one I actually should have shared with um, when we were doing the crystal color. This is Silver Shade. I love Silver Shade. It has like a more of a silver blue look to it than um, just plain crystal does. And I almost kind of prefer that. Um, I don't know though, because it definitely looks gray. It looks kind of silver, whereas the crystal looks clear. So it is a really nice option though, if you were looking for a good kind of neutral crystal, this is a really good one. Golds and rose golds now. Um, first, we're gonna start with light silk. Light silk is one of my favorite gold crystals um, because it is like a lighter kind of peachy gold it is so so pretty it is just such a fantastic gold if you're looking for a light gold now my golds and my rose golds did the exact same thing 
they are just a giant mess. So if I am trying to um, do a design with golds or rose golds, I'm pulling both of these containers because they just are a mess. And there's a bunch of different colors in each of these containers, sadly. So let's talk about these different colors. <laughs> okay, so um, this here is rose gold. I will be the first to admit I don't love rose gold. It has more of that metallic look to it than the crystal look. Um, but so far from what I've seen, it's really the only kind of rose gold crystal that we have. Um, so if I'm going to do a rose gold design, that is the crystal that I'm going to use. But I'll likely pair it with other golds in my collection. Um, this one here, I want to say is like Colorado Topaz. Yes. And that is my favorite gold crystal because it's not a yellow gold because it's not too champagne-y like it's just the perfect gold crystal I feel like. Silk is in here somewhere too. This crystal right here is silk. Um, and so silk is another great option if you want that lighter gold color. So silk is more of like a neutral like if you wanted like that light neutral type of nail and you want a crystal that pairs with it you're gonna want silk lighter than that more of like a super, super light gold, then you're gonna want light silk. Those are my gold and rose gold options. Um, they're all mixed up. Like I've got another container here that is equally as mixed up as this one. Oh gosh, you guys, one of these days, maybe I'll just, I will not take the time to separate like these. Like that is just way too time consuming for anything that I wanna do, but maybe someday I'll start like new containers of the different colors, I don't know, whatever, it works. Okay, let us talk quickly here about some of the bigger crystals that I have in my collection, um, just briefly, because truthfully, I don't reach for these a ton, and if you are going to bring in Swarovski crystals, I recommend just sticking with the flatbacks, especially if you're new to it. Um, these you have to apply in a completely different way than you do, I, I find anyway, than you do the flatbacks. So a lot of these crystals, um, they're not flatbacks. They've got kind of bigger chunks in here. Um, these ones, they sit up like a diamond. Same with these ones. These ones are flatbacks. Um, but even if these bigger chunky ones are flatbacks, I find that I prefer to use a gel to adhere these, such as the Ugly Duckling Sticket, um, than the glues that I typically use if I'm using the normal flatback crystals. And when I do the demo, we'll go into all of that and why I do crystals the way that I do. Um, so for now, that is my Swarovski crystal collection. Um, these are some more of the different options of crystals that I have. And lately I've been kind of experimenting more and more with these different options. Um, these pearl crystals I have only ever seen at Michael's. I haven't seen them from um, suppliers or anything. Um, they're great, I, they're just not small. They don't have very many small options, like if you want that SS5 or 7, um, these are closer to like the 9s and 12s. I like to pair these with small sparkly Swarovski crystals and have these be like the center focus. We are gonna talk about Swarovski crystal pixies in a completely separate video. I was thinking about including them in this one, but I, I could probably spend like an entire time talking about just pixies. So let's leave those for a different video. Let's move on to the demo portion of how I apply Swarovski crystals and why I apply them the way that I do. For the demo portion of this video, I'm gonna be demoing it on how I would use it if I was working on top of gel polish. But if I was working on a hard gel and I was embedding my color, I would do it a little bit different. So I would have my color down, I would have my clear gel, and then I would buff and do my finish file, and then I would go in with my Swarovski crystals. Um, and my last Swarovski crystal video, which will be linked in the description box below, um, does that technique. So if you wanna see that, then go watch that video. This will be with gel polish, which I know is um, very popular as well. So I just put down my one coat of gel polish, if you guys are curious what the color is. This is number 96 from Coco and Claire, and it's just called Barely Beige. Um, it's just one coat. It's a really, really pigmented neutral. Um, I'm gonna go in with a matte top coat on top of, I like doing art on top of like a matte top coat um, on gel polish. That way it kind of seals in the color and then I just find that things just kind of stick to it a little bit better. Um, so both if you're doing like hand painting or if you're doing um, stamping and then the same thing with uh, your Swarovski crystals. I just find it sticks a little bit better. It's not overly necessary though. Like you could just go right in with your glue here. Um, it's just kind of an extra step that I prefer to do. So, so. Let's talk about what I use for Swarovski crystals and why. Because um, everybody kind of has their preference when it comes to what they use. I prefer using 
a resin, a resin glue. So I just have a couple of them here. I have tried many of them on my channel over the years. Um, I really like the Light Elegance one. I really like the Glitter Bells one too. You guys have seen those shown as well. Um, the Kira Sky and the Beamy Bling Resin. So Kira Sky, um, Ellie Nail Glue, and then the Glitter Bells um, resin or glue, I can't remember what it's called. They, I find, are all very similar in how quick they dry. They dry in about the same amount of time. Um, this Beamy glue dries super fast, super, super quick, and that is my preferred type of glue. Um, I'm, a, like, I guess a seasoned Swarovski crystal person, so I don't find that I generally need to play with my Swarovski crystals very much, um, but if you're somebody who is newer to it or you um, take a little, you wanna take a little bit more time placing your crystals, you might gravitate towards a different type of resin. I just don't have the Ellie glue or the, I can't find my Glitter Bells one. Like I know it's somewhere here and it's a really great option as well. And the Ellie nail glue also is a really great option, but I've gone through all of my Ellie ones. So for this demo, we're gonna use the Beamy one just so you can see um, how quick you kind of have to work with it, I guess. When I apply my glue, I like to use these little micro swabs and these I just find on Amazon. They are, um, I wanna say they're like eyelash micro swabs or something, uh, but I like these because they uh, hold the perfect amount of glue in there. Let's talk about why I don't like to use a gel. So if I am gonna use a gel, I'm gonna use the Ugly Duckling Stick It because it is the best one that I have personally tried. It is a really thick type of product. Like mine's starting to crystallize. I think mine's a little bit older. I should probably get a new one in all honesty. This I like for the bigger crystals that have like a pointed back on them um, because the glue will Will not hold pointed back Swarovski crystals but I don't like using these type of products all the time because I find that when you put the gel down on the nail and then you plop a Swarovski crystal in it the gel tends to kind of pool around the crystal and it creates like kind of like a bubble around it and I don't personally like that look if you're gonna use a resin like this um, it looks like the Swarovski crystals are floating on the nail and that is my preferred way to do them and if you do it properly you won't have any problems with your crystals coming off um, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it properly the crystal tool that I have been using lately for my Swarovski crystals is my be me be jewel me pen um, again that Swarovski crystal video that I did years ago goes over a bunch of different tools um, and tells you kind of why I don't really love the crystal katana and there's some other ones that I share with it. Um, I really like the Beamy Be Be Jewel Me pen and I really like the Ugly Duckling um, Blinger tool, I think it's what it's called. I generally like to start with my bigger crystals and kind of work out from there. So I just put a little bit of glue down and then I just drop my crystal in it. That is how I prefer to work with them. And you can already see that like the crystals just look like they are floating in the nail design and that's what I prefer. And I like to just do a bunch of different sizes. I don't do a ton of super crazy, like fancy Swarovski crystal placements. Mostly I find that I like to stick with flat backs. So but that is literally all that I do when I am placing my crystals. It's just a little bit of glue and drop them down. That um, like I've just placed these on and my glue is already dry. Like that's how quick my Beamy glues dry. So if you want something that doesn't dry that fast, definitely use one of the other ones that I've recommended. Um, the nice thing about it drying so quickly is now I can go in with my top gloss for my top gloss in this demo, I'm just gonna use this one for Magic Gel. It, I love the Magic Gel top glosses. And this one is a delicate gold, so it's got a little bit of a glitter to it. I'm just gonna put a little bit on the edge here and you guys will see why in a second. Uh, so one thing that's really important when you're working with Swarovski crystals and like this type of glue is, um, I'm using way too much here. You just want to butt your top gloss up to the crystals, but not go over top of them or you will um, they will lose their shine. So we're just gonna butt this top gloss up, do your best not to go on top of them, and then you're gonna take a little brush, and I'm gonna, just using the Selena Ride and Swirly brush. I really like this brush for surrounding crystals. And then you're just going to go around them. And this is really important when you're doing gel polish. You need to have those crystals kind of sealed on the other side there. And if you've got any sort of lip, like this one here, has a little bit of a lip in here, you're gonna need to put some either top gloss in there or you're gonna go in with um, your Ugly Duckling Stick It and kind of build that up so that it doesn't catch. If this crystal catches, your client catches on anything, like their shirt, their pants, anything. It is just gonna pop off because it's got that lip there. If you don't have that lip, it's not gonna catch. So I'm going to cure this and I'll show you how to fill in that little lip. 
Now, I have a really old version of the Ugly Duckling uh, Stick It. Um, it doesn't look like this. It looks more like a gel if you were to buy the newer versions. Um, and I've heard of people saying that theirs have done this and it's likely the older versions that is doing it, but you can still use it. Like it still works, it's just a little bit thicker. So you would just take a little bit of the Stick It and you would turn your client around and you would just kind of shove it in there <laughs> and just um, create kind of like a little bit of a lip in there just to make sure that that doesn't catch for your client. That is it. That is all that I do for applying Swarovski crystals on my clients. Um, if you kind of feel and there's like any like rough edges or anything, um, you can go back in with some top gloss or some gel to kind of feel, uh, fill them in. But that's it. Um, I don't generally put top gloss in between here, but it is an option that you could do with a dotting tool or a brush. Um, and again, that would just make it so that those crystals don't catch either, but I don't generally do that and I don't really have an issue not doing that. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something from it about Swarovski crystals. I have such a passion and a love for creating nail art and then combining it with Swarovski crystals, especially the different colors and the different kind of options that are available. So I was seriously just so excited to bring this video to you guys and I know it comes highly requested as well. Comment below and let me know what your favorite Swarovski crystal is or if you learned something from this video, I would definitely be interested to know kind of what you're taking away from it. Um, it was a super in-depth video on um, all the different colors and stuff that I have and my recommendations. Also like a quick demo to show you guys how to use them for any of you out there who maybe struggle with using Swarovski Rossi crystals so it was jam-packed and I'd be curious to know kind of what you were looking for in this video and I hope that you found it. Make sure you're following me on all my social media and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!